Welcome, everyone, to the first episode of 2024 for the Big Butter Small Blade Podcast. I am Buddy Pulley, joined by Chase Folsom, and not joined by Seth Dolby because yes, he's on a we'll break. About, yes, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that. Yeah, I'm joined by obviously Chuck uh, from FrontStretch.com. Um, he is joining us again in 2024. Good to see, or I guess I'm not seeing you guys, but you're going to see me, or at least hear me, and hear Chuck and see Chuck. Um, but yes, <laughs> uh, we don't know where Seth is. He's missing in action. Um, no, Seth, actually, he he decided to take a little break from the podcast um, to pursue other ventures that you guys will see on the YouTube channel down the road. It's it's really cool what, he, what he's doing, and um, we wish him the best, and he'll be back soon. Um, but... Because of that, the Big Motor Small Blade Podcast has a new editor, and it's me. So, just know, if the Big Motor Small Blade Podcast sucks, (laughs) it's a collective effort from all of us. But if it's really good, you know who the editor is. (laughs) We have no clue who the editor was last year, if you thought it was good last year, by the way. Yeah, exactly. No clue who that guy was. We we outsourced it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But... uh, Chuck, what's up, dude? How how was your uh, how was your off season? Uh, it's been racing free, and I did that on purpose. Um, Same. <laughs> I, what was our last race? I guess technically my last race that I followed was the snowball. Last race I actually covered was Florence. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. When I pulled in my driveway at 5 a.m. when I got back from Florence, I have not put much of a thought into racing since. I needed a break. I took yeah. a break. I I was exhausted, and it's only going to be, it's only going to be. I won't say worse because it's not a bad thing, but it's going to be more this year. Yeah, so, happy well, to be back it, though. Yeah, and I mean, I've kind of in the same boat. My last race that I went to was um was the Thanksgiving Classic at at uh, Southern National, and I yeah, uh, I don't think any all any of us three have really put much thought into racing. Uh, we all had a pretty pretty uh seth and i have been going hard for the past couple of years chuck that you you became a big boy this past year and you, now what is it i think collectively between all of us we're going to hit 60 different races probably more i think actually pending um other things pending things pending announcements i think one of us specifically is going to be close to that number you just said yeah. So. yeah so collectively over the 10 month racing season we will hit 60 races at least between all three of us so look out for our instagram either big motor small blade or the buddy pulley or uh c Folsom racing or dobowski um and you can see our schedules for 2024 and if we're going to be at a racetrack that you're going to be at let us know let's fucking drink some beers and hang out talk about racing that's a buddy Uh, and seth exclusive but yeah yeah yeah. For now. Um, heck, I'll give you one fun racing story from the offseason, though. My only uh, – I don't even know that I, – I, I think I told you and Seth this, but I didn't tell much of anybody else. Uh, Friday before the Snowball Derby, I was sitting at work, and my boss at Front Stretch called me and was like, hey, call me ASAP. And I was like, okay. So I walked out of my regular job. And I called him and he was like, I don't know if we need you or not, but like, if we need you five minutes from now, can you go to Pensacola in like two hours and cover the snowball? And I was like, uh, sure. (laughs) I I guess like, what do I need? He was like, we already got hotels and everything booked. There was a, it was a sponsored deal and some people backed out. And I was like, I was like, yeah, absolutely. He was like, I don't think the other guy's going to go. So we're going to need you. I was like, awesome. Perfect. Called my dad, told him I'm going to Pensacola. Was on the phone with Abby, told her I was going to Pensacola, got a call back from Tom, answered the phone. He was like, I'm so sorry. Never mind. The guy said he can go. Damn. And I was like, ah, oh, dang. I was going to the snowball for five minutes to work. But <laughs> you, were, you were almost David Ayers of Spruntspress.com. <laughs> pretty much, dude. I yeah. was literally like, I was like already putting together like a packing list and everything. And oh, never mind. But in a way, it was probably, probably a good thing, but it cost me a bunch of money. Yeah. But yeah, that was my only. I think after that, I um, racing was out of sight, out of mind until the Chili Bowl. So, yeah, I didn't even really pay too much of attention to the 
to the Chili Bowl this year. Um, I did and didn't. I mean, I don't know. Not as much as in years past. Well, you didn't even pay attention to the Clash. That's, I did. That's obviously what we're here for is to talk about the Clash. Um, did that happen this that weekend? Did I happen. I um, turned the TV on Sunday when they said it was going to be, and it was some regular Fox News program. So NASCAR lied to me, I think, because uh, they didn't. Re- <laughs> the Booty Barker <laughs> meme. I guess I lied to your ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. They um, obviously, if you've been living under a rock, you I guess you don't know that they moved the class from Sunday to Saturday, and absolutely unprecedented move by NASCAR. Um, yeah. Some yeah. people were mad on Twitter that it was being called unprecedented, as if it wasn't unprecedented. Uh, yeah. Well, it's NASCAR Twitter. What do you expect? I mean, I just get amusement out of it, man. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Since I discovered NASCAR Twitter late last year, I was like, oh, man, some people are really dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was biblical, rain of biblical portions, uh, gonna hit Los Angeles, uh, of tragic portions, I think that is what they called it. Um, and, um, so obviously that was, they were going to hit Sunday. So NASCAR made the, uh, big brain move to go ahead and run the clash Saturday night. Um, obviously we all know about the, the debacle where they said fans weren't allowed Saturday. And then they came back out two days later and said, actually fans are allowed. It's going to be free. And then they got a free race, free NASCAR. Who doesn't like free NASCAR? Um, but, uh, I guess let's go ahead and talk about that. Chuck, what do you, what do you think they did right? What do you think you did wrong? I feel like you got some opinions. So I'm so on the fence about this because I see there's so many levels to both sides. Like those guys, those people that were going to be there for a free, for free practice and qualifying, they got a free race. That's awesome. Like that's a great thing. Hopefully with a race being moved. I know there were some people saying, oh, well, it wasn't full. Well, nine people out of ten, if you call them at four o'clock on a Saturday afternoon and say, hey, you want to go to a race in two hours, they're already booked for their Saturday night. And also, so, have you ever like been to oh, – I guess you haven't been to L.A. I've been to L.A. Traffic's pretty shitty. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I mean, it, and then it sucks because, you know, there's probably some people, especially in the older generations, that don't use social media and pulled out their clash tickets Sunday morning to get ready to go to the racetrack and saw the results go across the TV. Yeah. And so it's, it's a tough NASCAR was in a really tough spot because if anybody's been following the weather, it has not stopped raining since around midnight there Saturday night. Yeah. It's still raining. It's flooding in LA. It's not going to stop until probably Wednesday. They made the right decision and I applaud them for making the right decision. However, it does not take even a level median IQ human being to look at a forecast and well, make that decision can... more than two hours in advance. Well, that's my one, only gripe. One, with it, it was more. It was more than. I guess it was. They made the decision around three o'clock on Saturday. Yeah. Um. I mean, I I get it. Weather well, can change, here's, but here's the thing. One weather changes. Two, it looked bad and then it looked okay. And Friday night, it there was a window, and I, I, that I didn't know that. I kind of thought the same thing you did, but hearing from Denny, um, and I listened to the tear down earlier. Both of them said, "Yeah, Friday night we thought we started. I guess they started talking about it, but it looked like there still might be a window." And then Saturday morning is when they realized that. Uh, it was not looking good. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's – they're in a catch-22. I mean, do you, do you run the race or do you not run the race? And it's – I feel bad for those fans that couldn't go because it was on Saturday. But it's – unfortunately, it's kind of the same deal as if, you know, you got to fly it out Monday and it gets delayed till Monday. It, it's kind of not exactly the same thing, but the same thing. And ultimately – it was a clash. It was a clash. It's not a points paying race. Um, not that it doesn't matter to some people. I definitely, I flew half all the way across the country last year to go to the clash. So it clearly means something to people. Um, but it's just, it's one of those deals. It sucks. And everybody, everybody lost, but 
some people didn't lose as much as others. I'll put it like that. I just, I guess the people I, that got free NASCAR didn't. Lose yeah, <laughs> I think, and obviously I'm not in charge, so it doesn't really matter what I think. But if you would put me in that situation, and how I see it is, you start really looking at a forecast as being okay. This is this is probably set in stone. Probably three days out. At three days out, I think, especially with it being the clash, and there's, okay, maybe there's a, you're looking at a window. The problem is they never stopped saying that it was going to be like tragic storm, even if there was a window. Like the, the magnitude of the well, storm it was never changed. Suppo- it, it was originally not supposed to hit till Sunday. And it, it, you got to think about it. it well, gotta, what I'm gotta, saying is like in, in the safety perspective of the fans. Yeah. The, the magnitude of the storm was never in question. It was where the window was. In my opinion, when you know, I would have viewed that almost as if there was a hurricane coming on the East Coast. And you say, okay, even if we have a window Sunday, these people trying to get out of here Sunday night and Monday morning are going to be in danger. Why don't we just three days out? Hey, everyone, it's three days in advance. We're going to move the whole schedule because it's a non-points paying race. That's what I would have done, given the magnitude of the weather phenomenon that is going on there right now. I would have oh. sent it. Said, it's not like it's Daytona. It's not a, a playoff race. It's the clash. Here, and if you give them three days. Here, I mean, I ultimately, yes, that would have been the ideal way. But play devil's advocate. They've never moved a race up this they've never moved a race up more than an hour before and just true up a full day yes they could have there's a lot of things they could have done right but you know we won world war ii and world war one there's a lot more dangs we could have done right but we still won the war uh right and i think i think nascar you know ultimately did the right thing but yeah and i mean i don't i don't mind saying they did the right thing because ultimately they did it, whether or not they made the decision at the right time, they, they made the, learn from. They made the right decision. I just think I like playing devil's advocate in this situation. How I would say it is okay if the clash was at Daytona this year, like it has been for decades up until the last three years. Well, we and, have to go back across the country and build race cars for the okay. Daytona 500. If the cla- if this was, it, it, I get what you're saying. Yeah, what I'm saying is, that. if we were racing in Daytona or Miami in October, and there was a hurricane going to hit Sunday night, what would they do? Yeah, I mean... What would they do? Well, Would they they move the race to Saturday? I personally think in that situation, given flip side of the country, and you know what that weather situation is, I think they would move it. I think it should have been viewed the same way, but... I thought it was asinine. I thought it was absolute asinine that they were moving it to Saturday from Sunday. I didn't think, and not that I was against it. I just could not believe that it was going to happen. So, I mean, I don't know. I think in, I think this opens up Pandora's box that they could do this. um, At least probably give, move the races up further in the future. Yeah. I, mean, not I don't want him to whole... abuse it, though. I don't want him to abuse it. I don't think they will, but uh, I think I think it. I think it more comes down to you do it when the safety of the fans is in question. Yeah, and that's it. That's the only reason I think you do it. But when that becomes a question, like a severe weather system, no matter where we're at, that's when I think they should, in the future, have that card in their back pocket to say, "Okay, we have to do this." Because, not because of necessarily the teams and the logistics, but the lives of the people who are coming to watch this. I think also, I think maybe something, I don't know if this really did, and I'm not trying to go down a rabbit hole with this, but I think maybe their decision might have been influenced by Chicago last year. And what yeah. in, that ended up working out, but it almost didn't. And so they kind of, they might have wanted to try to avoid that situation um again and you know and in a small way it still didn't work out because there was a race that technically that without a loophole in the rule book didn't run to completion the xfinity race never actually reached halfway they found a loophole 
So in a small way, it didn't work out. And I think that's where they learned their lesson. Exactly. Um, so getting into the actual, getting into the actual race. Um, let's see. Look at my fancy notes and my chicken scratch. Here's my notes. <laughs> ten fingers. Um, your ten digits. Um, Size I can count. Yeah. What do you think about qualifying? How they did qualifying? You're asking the wrong guy, honestly. Oh yeah, I guess you didn't. What? So how? They, okay. Do you know how they did it? Okay, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be totally open about what my Saturday was. Um, went to work Saturday morning. Watched Carolina Duke in the afternoon because I live in North Carolina as a sports fan. That's bigger than the Super Bowl. Go Heels, baby! And um, hung out with, my, with friends Saturday night. Didn't really watch the race because I had plans of watching it Sunday. So. If you'd like to enlighten me, I'll give my opinions on how what I think it was. Well, no excuses, Chuck. I was also out Saturday night, and I went back and watched qualifying the next day. So oh a, man, yeah, because I'm a, I'm a, you know, committed to this podcast and being giving people the most informed opinion I could give them. No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, I did go back and watch it, and what they did is essentially how they've done qualifying in a way where it's it was kind of unfair what it was is they had three different rounds of practice you know i don't know the cars out at different times and then the third you know run that each team got that was how they determined the starting lineup um but it was very much influenced by when you went out and so you saw a lot more guys towards the end of the session that missed because they just didn't have you know the track conditions that were favorable and i guess it doesn't matter (laughs) but i feel like that that could have done that could have been done better i mean i think what they should have done is taken divided taken the you know whatever the practice times were and divided them into six different groups with and try to pair it up you know Car from the top of the chart to the middle of the chart, you know, down the list and try to make it a little bit more fair. But I guess that's, you know, neither here nor there. Hindsight, too. So was that the original plan for qualifying? Or is no, that... I don't know. I mean, obviously, it was the heats were the original plan. Um, what was so... that going to be how they set the heats? Um, I don't remember. I don't Because that's that was... that's 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 what determines it. Ultimately, that was, like that was like formats ago. Yeah, it's true. But if like if that was going to be like the legitimate plan for no matter what, if it was setting heats or race, whatever, it's kind of crappy. Now, if it's what they ended up doing because, you know, they moved a race up an entire day. I don't really have any complaints because they moved a race up an entire day. Yeah. So I'm just, for I'm sure um, I'm sure Daniel Suarez and Chris Buescher Christopher and Christopher Bell, Bell and. College racing, um, I'm sure they uh, they had a word or two to say about it, which they actually did, because <laughs> um, it was. But um, that was that. Um, well, Blaney uh, needed the provisional. Yeah, I mean, Cup uh, champ had to have a provisional. Hey, man, I mean, it's a humbling sport. <laughs> Guess it pays to not blow your brakes out at Phoenix. It does. It does. Yeah, <laughs> imagine you're Christopher Bell and you're like, all right. Well, hopefully the three guys that beat me for the championship are worth a fuck and, and can can beat me or can uh can get in on their time. Oh, never mind. No, never mind. Nope, can't do that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, what? So I'll start out by saying this: I don't think the race was bad, but I don't think it was anything to write home about it's just to start out i think and unfortunately i think this is kind of the general feeling i've had about the clash at the coliseum is i think last year was a shit show but the first two years they were solid but they weren't or the other two years they were solid but they weren't it just it a quarter mile non points event 
it seemed like a hell of an idea and it, it i don't know it fell short of my expectations and i think it had some things working against it like i think the car counts were entirely too high every year um the track's flat yes but you look at those heat races and the heat races were fantastic every year i just and... the the reason i say the track being flat matters is because I think we would knock a quarter mile until you put safety out the window and you put 20 cup cars at Anderson. I don't know what Anderson looks like. so and It's where they run the little 500 at. Or you okay. put 20 cup cars at Thunder Road. Or heck. Wake County. Put 20 cup cars at Wake County. It's not going to go the way it did at the Clash. Yeah. What? So, yeah. Wake County maybe because it's pretty flat. But those other two have banking and i feel like for well cars so that are, you can do with a when you're in a football stadium and the grand is, yeah exactly for banking um I think, I think it's a car issue i still i know we're gonna beat this it, horse i don't to really death. think it i don't think this is a car issue because, you know why i think it is because the race after it was outstanding from what i've heard well, we'll what i've seen that here in a minute um i really think because uh, like i said you look at the heats the heats every year were great. Yeah. And if you look at it, I don't see why. It's a non-points event. It is a all-star style race. Why do we need three quarters of the fucking field in it? I don't understand. Like, it. I mean, I understand why they want three quarters of the field in it, but I'm sorry, dude. It's, it's tough. You're one of the, you're the big boys. Like, I'm sorry. You don't get a participation... Trophy, welcome to the fucking show. Like you, yeah, I don't know. I, if you want to race in the big show, you gotta earn it. Like, and obviously, and he when you have heats and you have practice, you get plenty of TV time. I get it. I get it. That's, I think part of the part of the thing is the teams. The teams, I guarantee you, every team complained about it and was like, "Well, if you're gonna make us go all the way to California exactly. the week before Daytona, you better let us race." Yeah, and I mean, heck, imagine exactly, being RFK. That's, that's, exactly what, that's exactly what Justin Mark said. He says he says everyone should race. I'm like, well, one, you can't put you can't have 36 cars race. Um, but obviously that means just not go to the Coliseum. But I mean uh, dude, it was a cool idea in theory. And it was poorly executed, not because of the clash or not because of the Coliseum. Like it was poorly executed on NASCAR's part, and I'm saying not saying that the Coliseum, because obviously this is. I've probably... heard that before. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, obviously, this is probably the last year of the Coliseum, and I just I don't think it was a failure, but I think it had the potential to be something fantastic, but instead it was kind of neutered by just the. I guess they're not called the RTA, the teams, you know, wanting what they want. And, but yet they complain about cars getting wrecked. I have a way to fix that, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I just think the only reason I say it's a car issue is be, and it's not all a car issue, but the car contributes to it because the current next gen car. 100% 100% promotes bumper car style racing. And that's what you saw last year. It does. And like, if you put, man, it's almost like it's the best race car they've ever made. But if you put 20 Xfinity cars out there, you're going to have, no, dude, no. Uh, I don't agree with that at all because you're going to have exactly what we had at Martinsville in the fall last year. And Martinsville in the fall last year was a better race than any of the three clashes. It was an absolute shit show. And at the cars. end, and the reason it turns in that at the end is because of who's behind the wheel, yeah. not because the race cars. I think we see great racing with the next gen car at the Coliseum. If the body just folded, like, any at all, at all. If it, if if you were if, if the drivers were even the slightest bit punished for full throttling the guy in front of them into the corner, the racing would be different. But instead, since the, they're driving tanks that are indestructible, they just, all of them, just send it up. I mean, 
go watch Bubba and Larson's onboards from the last five laps of that race. They each drove through every everybody, whether it was their fault or not, every single corner for the I, last five laps. I still think that comes down to the limited room to race. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, because everybody's yeah. fighting. There's more track that's covered on the racetrack than track that's not covered. Yeah, exactly. And you have so I, many cars out there. I think ultimately, I said this last year, I said this after the first clash, I think it there should have been 18 cars max. And I think we would, we would have saw a hell of a race because once some cars got knocked out, the racing got better. And I, I don't think it was over. Like I said, I didn't think it was a bad race. It was just... I, it wasn't as good as I was hoping it was going to be three years ago. But, yeah. I mean, I digress. Um, and the owners saying, complaining about the car counts and complaining about them not making, uh, cars not making the show. Coincidentally, they're the ones where uh, <laughs> they didn't make the show. So, um, Chris Rice uh, obviously wasn't too happy because uh, they brought two cars out to Los Angeles and they ran a practice session and that was it. So did 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 Brad make the field this year? Yeah, Brad made the field. Okay, because I was gonna say, if not, isn't that zero for six on the three yeah, the yeah. the two RFK cars? Yeah, but they went Brad, they went one for six on making the clash in three yep. years. Man, I guarantee you, Brad never wants to go back. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I I think the Coliseum experiment was a hundred percent worth it. And I think it's worth trying again in a different market and in a little bit with tweaks to it. But I think, I think you gotta, you gotta do it right. Um, you know, the only issue with that is the only play there's basically, there's not another place in America. They can do that. Yeah. Because. Well, Here's for any for anybody that doesn't know and isn't up to date on their football stadium math, there's not any other NFL stadiums that are des- designed like the LA Coliseum. The LA Coliseum is not designed as your stereotypical by the book football stadium. And if you want proof, look up pictures from USC Trojans home games. They actually install like extra seating behind the end zones, and there's another 50 yards. 50 to 75 yards extra before you get to the actual whatever you want to call it, the big thing that you see. What is that called with the torch at the top? I don't know what that's called. The columns, called. Yeah. the columns and the, the Coliseum, whatever. The the grandstands in general. All like AT&T Stadium in Arlington yeah. where Dallas plays. Great, great idea, except it's like two-thirds of the size. Yeah, well, and here's the thing. I don't think it even necessarily has – meant i don't i didn't mean necessarily football stadium i more meant if you build it they will come that concept and um i think here i think this ought to be a thing i think nascar for the all-star race in the coliseum they should foot the bill it's it's a race for the fans and for the teams to you know show off the teams and drivers that are the best and it's a thank you to the fans and i think nascar should foot the bill or at least foot most of the bill for it as far as like, you know, help with some sort of travel or whatnot. Cause ultimately it doesn't mean much for the teams. Obviously the all-star race is a little bit different. They go what 45 minutes away to Wilkesboro. Um, but you know, you're going all the way out to fucking Los Angeles and we're talking about going uh, to Mexico next year. Spoiler alert. Um, so I think there's gotta be some, some give from NASCAR to you know hey you're gonna make them go all the way out there because it's a requirement if you're a charter team you have to go to the clash then you know maybe nascar should help them out with that but that's not a bad idea yeah yeah if Um, the car if it wasn't if it wasn't basically a spec series i'd say for the clash and the all-star race it'd be cool if they just said no rules build whatever you want but that would be like so awesome if they went back to you know, like the T Rex car that is was so illegal and was told never to come back to a racetrack yeah. ever mm-hmm. that was running an all star race or the backup yeah. car that the twenty four team or pulled Sam out. Or Sam Warnish's car that was skewed all to hell. In <laughs> yeah, like two thousand eight. 
or the Roush engines that they brought in 2012 that failed miserably and nuked a quarter yeah. of the way through the race. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Well, that, that was, those were the good old days, but now I would say do that, but it's a spec series. So as soon as they do that, as soon as one of those parts gets left on a race car for Charlotte next week, God forbid you're out like 300 points. So, well, don't do it. Don't leave it on the car. <laughs> but then they, I mean, that's, true. that's just, uh, that's just, then again, the last time job. some, the last time somebody did that at Charlotte, they still ran last. So, yeah, you know who you are. <laughs> I know exactly who Chase Briscoe is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's talk about, um, let's talk about Joey Logano and Ty Gibbs. Oh, what? Dude, hold on. That's the pot calling the kettle black both hold ways. On. Hold on. Can we just, can we, I know we all know, everybody listening, everybody watching knows, but I'm just going to say it so it's out there. They do realize this is like the clash, right? <laughs> like this doesn't mean anything. And I mean, in my opinion, Joey needs to grow the fuck up. Well, Joey needed to grow up 10 years ago. I mean, yeah, but like, you're really going to like go after Ty Gibbs, grab him by the collar. I mean, he's 19, 19 years old. Granted, he's, you know, he's an adult, you know do whatever but i mean he's still he's in a sophomore year he's going for his first win ever and he didn't it's not like he wrecked you he raced you hard he raced you how you race everybody else I was gonna say all he's looking at is the short version of what he was at 19 well, and basically and the what, same car the same car so well, I don't that's what he, mad about. and that's what ty said ty said i watched you like i, I like i know what you do like come on man I mean, yeah, he and Joey wrecked the fuck out of Ty at Martinsville. Like, can we talk about that for five minutes? And then he was like, and then he wants to say, yeah, considering his history with me, it was a bad idea. Well, Joey, you are the history. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like no matter who started what, either one of them getting mad at the other one is the pot calling the kettle black. Well, and here's the thing. I'll give Ty they're both for they're both guilty for it. Yeah. I, I... Ty didn't do himself any favors. When he was in Xfinity, for sure. But I give the kid credit. He didn't ruffle a single feather last year except for Joey Logano, which I'll give him more credit because he's the only one in the field that has given Joey shit. You ever notice how no one touches Joey? Joey can do whatever the hell he wants and no one fucks with him? Like, Ty is literally the only one. Ty, honestly, I feel like in some people's eyes, in my eyes a little bit, it, it is the Rusty Walls, Daryl Walter, 1989, Winston, where, you know, Rusty was the, Daryl was the heel and Rusty was the hero, and those flipped. And I think it's, I think, in my opinion, Ty, it, you know, a little bit, he gained some respect for me for this. And he didn't even do anything other than hold his ground and tell Joey, I'm not taking your shit. And you know what? Yeah. Kudos to him for that. There's only been there's only been you know one other guy that's ever really done that. And what do you know, the guy that used to drive that car? Oh, Kyle Busch. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, yeah. Well, and Denny Hamlin. I'll give Denny. Well, Denny, that's again that that's like kind of like yeah that doesn't that's really call. count. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, dude, I just <sighs> um. I just, in my opinion, Joey's not that good to begin with. So, like, why are we? I don't know. Oh, are we gonna open that can of worms? I mean, dude. I mean, why not? I, Seth and I have said it. I've been saying it for years. I don't think Joey's good. He'll be good this year because it's an even number year. Go to any odd number year in the past ten years, and where's Joey Logano? Exactly. I think it's like, I think it's like he, he's good. He's been good in like he's been really good in like five races in his career. Like he's he, won he's, a bunch. He's won a bunch, but he's he's only held put at the level he is because of a couple races. And it was those couple races. It wasn't like he dominated. Like 
like it, it was honestly like in those five races I'm trying to think and, hold on i say joey's not that good he's not as good i he is overrated let me let me put that let me let me say that he is overrated in my opinion He's obviously good. He's won 30 something cup races. Like you win one cup race, I'm sorry. You're fucking you're fucking good. I don't care what the circumstances. Um but he's way overrated. Like the five races that we're talking about here are the 2015 Daytona 500, the 2008 to 8, 2018 Fall Martinsville race, the 2008 Homestead or 2018 Homestead race. Lord the I assume 2022 Vegas yep. and, then and the, the 2022 finale. Exactly. And I don't know if anybody else remembers, he was only the best car in one of those. He just yep. happened to win all five of them. And those five races pretty much are his legacy. It Literally, yeah. I mean, he and he only stumbled Phoenix, into a couple of them. Yeah. Only Phoenix was the one... Yeah. Where and it's just because Penske just has this chokehold on Phoenix. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing: before we we're gonna get like, if anybody watches this, we're gonna get all sorts of hate from every Logano fan ever. Uh, but I, dude, I don't, I don't care. I don't like the guy. I'm sorry. Like I'll I'll admit it. I, we're supposed to be unbiased. I don't like the guy. Like in that Netflix series, we'll talk a little bit about that next week because we don't really have much to talk about. But that Netflix series. Didn't make me like him anymore. Um, he just, he just, he, I don't know. I, I don't like I, Joey Logano. A lot of people don't like Joey Logano. Ty Gibbs definitely doesn't like Joey Logano. So, and I never thought I'd say me and Ty Gibbs have anything in common, but we do on that front. So obviously I don't show any bias, but I'm going to say, hold on, let me count how many words this. I think it's five words that will explain my feelings. Okay. Could have just said them. I think maybe it's six. I don't know. I was a Carl Edwards fan. There you go. Yeah. I don't I don't need to say much more. Yeah. Well, I was a Kevin Harvick fan, and um obviously um he beat Harvick in a couple of those races on and just that still eat at me today. So obviously there's a little, the, uh, I think animal. the one for me probably eats a little more, but I don't know. You, you got to see, you got to see Kevin win a title. I did get to see Kevin win a title. Hey man, maybe Carl wasn't that good either. Um, okay. <laughs> we don't need to go there now. Yeah. Um, uh, Ricky Stenhouse, John Hunter Nemechek. All I saw was Ricky Stenhouse walk up and rip dude's freaking window net off. I think that's all you needed to see. I'm I was it, like, "Dang, gum, get it, Ricky." Yeah, yeah. Ricky, like I don't, yeah. I don't know if anybody, any of y'all have inter- interacted with Ricky Stenhouse. Ricky Stenhouse is I've short, but Ricky it. Stenhouse isn't necessarily a small dude. Like, no, he's a yeah, he's about he's, my height he's, and he's like, fit. He's a he's in shape. Of, yeah, yeah, he's about he, he's, he's about he's, my... a, he's he's a little he's a little buff. Yeah, he's about my height and about your build. Um, yeah, he's 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 big boy. Um, he's and, not one I'd fuck with too. Ricky don't give a damn. It's and um, I just think all it said to me was, man, John Hunter got a cup ride again, and uh, things didn't change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give him one yeah. race. Yeah, people. Everybody got so mad at Ty Gibbs in twenty twenty two. And then John Hunter is even John Hunter got mad at Ty Gibbs in 2022. And then John Hunter turned around and did the same thing in 2023. To an extent. Um, too much less. Well, he's always done it his whole career, though. He's always just. Yeah. John Hunter is definitely, he's got a, he's got a chip on his shoulder. His dad had a chip on his shoulder. I wasn't never a real big fan of his dad either. His dad, you know, I don't know. It's go go watch any interview with Joe Joe Nemechek and him being pissed off, and then you learn that it's never ever anyone else's fault, and then you know that carries over. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't really know what the situation was. I just, I don't I just know, saw, yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, um, but uh, I think it is 
I, I'm a big fan of going over and just pulling the guys window net down. Yeah, that that's, that's a boss move. Yeah, that's like yeah. that's like, that's some alpha male shit, right? Yeah, a couple <laughs> of my favorite people really in the garage have pulled that move off, and it's been Ricky Stenhouse and Kyle Petty. So I mean, that, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, they might not have done much in their careers, but they've done enough for me. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Um, everybody, somebody else was, uh, Bubba was mad at Kyle Larson or vice versa. And then McDowell was mad at Ricky and Ross was mad at McDowell. And I mean, wow. great for a uh, great way to start off the season. Get, get well, guys pissed off each other. The Larson and Bubba thing, which that got all over Twitter today because somebody posted Larson's on board from the last five laps. Yeah, and if you yeah. just watch the onboard, all you see is him plow Ty Gibbs on the, on the original last lap and dump can we, him. Can you even say that? I feel like that's like a that's like a crime. Um, <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Don't, don't put too much salt into that one. And then, and then, <laughs> watch him run over Ty Gibbs coming to the white flag originally. There we go. And then you see him dump Bubba on the actual last lap. And you're like, okay, well, Kyle just wanted to get him back before the flag, man. But <laughs> if you actually watch Bubba's in car, he ran Kyle into Ty the first time. He drove straight through the five and put the five into the 54. And then he drove through the five, two lap, two corners in a row on the last restart before the five cleared himself in front of the 48 and just dumped the 23. Yeah. Well, it, and I, it I was, guess that's what he was getting him back for. It was just, I don't know what you expect. It's, yeah. It's the clash. Yeah. It's a quarter mile. It's bumper cars. There's way too many cars out there. I, I mean, I care well, and, more. And I'll give, uh, I'll give Bubba some credit. He didn't really give a damn about what happened. He was like, yeah, I mean, let's, you know, I hit him. He hit me. It's, it's the clash. Yeah. It's a He's, quarter mile. So, he said on the radio, like, um, before both incidents, him and Freddie were talking about what line he should take. And Freddie was like, I mean, you're going to get dumped on the top unless you just want to say, fuck it. And Bubba said, well, I'm in fuck it mode. I have no friends now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, that was, and I mean, yeah. it almost, it almost kind of paid off for him until finally somebody gave it back to him. But I mean, kudos to him for taking it on the chin and being like, huh, oh, whatever. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, people who were going to go Sunday and couldn't go Saturday, they're pissed off. Most of the field was pissed off. And then um, most of the grandstands were, were pissed off at the end of it too because Denny beat their favorite driver again. <laughs> Old Netflix hero himself. <laughs> Denny Hamlin, baby. Oh, my Lord. Dude, I was – dude, I, you're, I'm going to piss you off. And Seth, Seth was there to witness it. I was pulling for Denny Hamlin mad hard. <laughs> I ain't got a dog in this fight no more. My guy's sitting in a sitting in an air conditioned booth wearing a suit. So I was I was pulling hard for old Dennis. He didn't beat uh, my favorite driver. <laughs> I wasn't really pulling for anybody. So. Yeah. But uh yeah, Denny Hamlin wins the Not in that one anyway. Um hey Chuck. Is it Denny's year? No. It's never Denny's year. <laughs> <laughs> never Denny's year. Oh, I thought about it, you know. I saw it the other day when we were texting. Wild, the- wild uh, prophecy to put out there. Is this Denny's year after winning the clash? <laughs> I love how they put that out. I love how that, that carries right over to Daytona, Atlanta, Watkins Glen, you know, uh, uh, you know every yeah. other racetrack for sure. Right. Yeah. I, I was thinking about it the other day when we were talking about, like, what we were going to talk about on this week and next week. And I was like, who am I going to pick for my championship? pick and i was like i'm not gonna say who i'm gonna pick but i was like well i don't want to pick that guy and i was like maybe i'll pick denny maybe denny will finally get get it done this year and then i thought to myself what's wrong with me no he won't <laughs> no he yeah. won't but yeah. what one thing i want to touch on is what's on your hat yes i actually want they, to touch on them too it's 2024 they still haven't figured it out they still suck. And it's you know, not the it's not the booth anymore. It's not the booth because 
the the guy that's the reason you're wearing that hat did a great job and they yeah. tied it all together really well. But it doesn't really matter what any of the three of them are talking about when we're zoomed in on nine year old little Johnny sitting in turn three eating his cotton candy. So yeah. they could be talking about uh, the one putting somebody in the wall in turn two all they want if we're watching little Rebecca chow down on her M&Ms. So, or Chris Gavehart chew on his pencil or the left front of Denny Hamlin's tire. Dude, what is the Fox production crew doing? Uh, I don't know, dude. It is, uh, uh, we have audio listeners, Chuck, so I'll let them know. I'm wearing a Fox sports or a NASCAR on Fox hat um, to go with my Kevin Harvick uh, shirt uh, because I'm a 2024 Kevin Harvick fan and this is what we do now. Um, but yeah, I mean, Kevin, I thought was a great addition to the booth. Um, I honestly, I'll be honest with you. I didn't care for Kevin in the booth when he did those Xfinity races. I didn't think he, I thought he added good insight, but he was, he was, bland. Uh, he was bland. Yeah. Um, but I think though this, I did think it would be a good balance between him and Clint. And that would also bring Mike joy back into it and give him some passion behind it because he has someone that isn't just doing slapstick humor. Um, and it, it showed, <laughs> it really showed they, they were, they showed great chemistry, chemistry right out of the gate. Um, I mean, Clint but, and uh, Kevin have always worked well together, no matter, yeah. I mean, they were, they worked at RCR together. They were at SHR together. Yeah. They're, they're, um, they're tight. And then, from what I heard, Mike was actually better. Yeah, well, and and that it makes perfect sense. He he's got he's got people. It's it's like Seth and I when, for instance, last year when it was just the two of us, and then we brought you on, and then there was a week or two where you weren't on, and it was like, oh shit! Like it was nice having that third, you know, kind of, yeah, you know, um, third talking head, you know, to bounce ideas off us and it brought us into it and yeah i think that's the that's the same deal that mike joy's been missing for the past couple of years um i do want to give fox a little bit of credit because instead of a computer generated uh cutaway car they actually showed a um an actual car and got in to the details of it i think they were explaining how brake bias works and I thought that was extremely – I thought that was a huge upgrade for them as far as, like, how to paint the picture for the fan. And I think there was several instances. I can't think of it, the others off the top of my head, that that was the case. But, yeah, it's still a football stadium. How are the camera angles this fucking bad? <laughs> how do you miss – how do you miss a wreck? Every on, wreck. They missed every wreck. For on a court – I, I mean, I'm not talking about every – I'm just – how do you miss one? On a quarter mile track in a stadium that is built to cover football games where you have to see the whole field. The cameras were above me last year in the VIP suite at the Clash. I saw the whole track. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> like, like oh, well, I just. Now, obviously, that's. It, uh, obviously, very, this. That's very well, this happy. isn't like a new issue because no. the, the one that, the one that comes to my mind the most, no matter how bad the booth was last year with just Clinton Mike, the production made it worse. And if you go back to, I know we saw it all over social media. We didn't watch it live because we were there. Wilkesboro. Yeah. Clint Boyer, that race was so boring on TV. And Clint Boyer was trying to find <laughs> something spin. to talk about. <laughs> And all yeah. he said was, come on, stay with me here, trying to show the fans what Ryan Blaney's car was doing. As soon as he said, stay with me, they cut the shot. And all you hear is yeah. him, throw the pen. Yeah. So it's obviously been an ongoing issue. There, I, and I saw, I, was, I followed the debate all day long on Twitter. It's bad. Like, it's really bad. Like, I, you, we want to sometimes bash on F1 or whatever. Their production team does a way better job on way yeah. more spread out tracks. NBC clears by miles with the production team. Flow Racing has probably a tenth of the budget that Fox does. And That's... every single race I've ever <laughs> watched on Flow Racing. they have that much? Yeah, not even that. And every <laughs> single race I've ever watched on Flow Racing, outside of 
the cameras that are mounted in like turn two at Hickory or whatever, I think they're in turn four, but you get my point, is better, is more well-roundedly produced than a Fox NASCAR race. That's sad. Yeah. Well, and here's something I don't know. Man, Kevin Harvick is a game changer. He he changes organizations, and I think maybe maybe he can talk something into him. Maybe he can, you know, somebody something. They yeah. have to. They have to. Yeah, because it's uh, it's bad. Um, because like in a race that it is is designed to draw in new fans, how are you supposed to draw in new fans when? They can't visually see what's being talked about. Yeah. Mike Joy and Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer are talking about something on one side of the track, and we're not even looking at a whole race car. We're looking at the front bumper of the leader. Like, not yeah. the front bumper can. We're zoomed in on the freaking logo on his car. Yeah. What are we doing? Like, it can't even focus on the Smithfield anymore. The, <laughs> the production can't be the production can't be that bad to where it engulfs and overrides the broadcast team being so much better it that has to be fixed and hopefully when they go to daytona they've been doing this for a very long time at daytona hopefully it's better and if it's not which i mean we won't see it until the next day but if it's not yeah brother i've never been to daytona i'm really excited yeah i'm really excited but if it's if it's not better then it's gonna be a long long couple of races I will add one more thing and I'll shut up. I wonder if that changes any, uh, if like anything changes when the new TV deal comes in, I believe next year, right? Next year is the new TV deal. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if anything changes because, you know, you're going to have streaming races. I wonder, I wonder if like with the new streaming partners, if there's going to be any collaboration of like, hey, let's all try new things to get better. Because at the end of the day, I know yeah, like I Fox and it. Fox and NBC are rivals, right? They they want to beat each other. But the, at the end of the day, we have to come together and do do good for the sport. The sport they, has they, to thrive. Well, and, and and they do want each other to do well because it does carry over. Yeah. So, and you like you, you at the end of the day. I mean, deep down, obviously, you want to beat the other one, but the sport has to thrive for there to be a competition. Yeah. So high tides raise all ships. So, yeah. Um, NASCAR Mexico. Um, I do want to talk about that. I don't know if you saw any of that. Great. I heard race. it was great. I heard it was fantastic awesome. race. Um, it is, you know, the cars tour, they talked about taking Wake County off the schedule because it was a quarter mile and they don't feel like tearing up equipment. Maybe they should look at their drivers because uh, the NASCAR Mexico drivers showed an incredible amount of respect for each other. They knocked the hell out of each other. But they also, if they did knock the hell out of each other, they let the guy k- gather it back up. They're like, damn, I didn't want, like, they showed respect. They raced hard and they put on a hell of a show. Thanks a little bit different bodies there, but yeah. Uh, not, I mean, yeah, but not that much different. Not that I mean, much different. I, Wake County will be a lot better. It was, it was the field. We'll talk car store later. Yeah. I ha- that's a, that's a segment for not today. Um, yeah. But I heard it was great. I heard the worst part about the race was the fact that they slapped numbers on the front windshield. <laughs> I, I think that's just uh yeah, that's uh, I know it's a NASCAR Mexico thing. Oh yeah. my god, that was yeah, that was no, please weird. no, please no. no. They, don't at NASCAR, do don't do it, don't do it, NASCAR. They there belong on the door. You already moved them out of their traditional spot where they should be. Don't move them anymore. Yeah, no, I don't think they're gonna do that. Um, I don't think they're gonna fig Newton the the cup series but um yeah that was definitely interesting yeah, and hey yeah. shout out to daniel suarez he didn't get to race in the cup race but at well, least i was about to up. say man me amigo where hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on Ugh. for anybody listening buddy has just gotten up out of his seat and left his microphone i, I believe he's grabbing something daniel suarez merchandise here what do we have buddy Let's see what, what Buddy's show and tell is for today. I'm not going to smash it because it's the only one I got. But for you uh, video YouTube listeners, me amigo! It's a, it's a mini taco pinata. It's a mini taco pinata because Daniel Suarez won a race. <laughs> yes. Jose, we won. Mob, we won. 
I mean, that's good so for him. Excited. That's awesome. I didn't Dude, get to watch it, but good for him. How cool was that for the? Because there, I'll, I'll tell you this. I went obviously went to LA last year. Um, it is it is a big market for Daniel Suarez, and that was really cool. That you know he missed the clash, but he was able to come back and give the fans you know something to cheer about. Um, and it, it's like I said, man. It's guys like Daniel Suarez. It's guys like Bubba Wallace. It's guys like Haley Deegan. They have the power to girls like girls like Haley. Deegan. Um, they have the power <laughs> to bring in bring eyes to the sport because of who they are, and it, it's good to when they do good. And I I'm yeah. happy for Daniel. Obviously, it's it's not a cup race. It's not even a points paying. It's not points for it, cup race. It's not a non points cup race. It's a Mexico. NASCAR Mexico race where he had so much success, but I was definitely, you know, I was, I was proud, proud of him to, and hopefully this knocks a little confidence in him that, you know, he won a race. Um, so yeah, happy for me, amigo. Yep. I don't really have much else to say on that. Like good yeah. for him. I'm glad it's good to see uh, Daniel Suarez happy. Yeah. In a race car again. Yeah. He's, he's such a, like his personality is just such like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's um, it's contagious. It when is. he's when he's happy, it's very contagious. When he's happy, it's contagious. But he has a lot of intensity, and it 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 rubs off as well. Um, so yeah, good for Daniel. Um, I like I said, I I can't give the uh, NASCAR Mexico field enough credit. That was a that was a great race. Um, so yeah. Um. Sundress and dumbass. Hmm. Go with uh yeah, give me your sundress. You know, I don't really uh I guess NASCAR for making the right decision. Whoa, whoa, run that back run that by me one more time. I know that's very rare for me to praise NASCAR and don't get don't get used to it because uh it does not happen very often. Yeah. Those that know me know I'm harder on NASCAR than either Seth or Buddy. I don't so, know if you're harder on NASCAR than Seth is. Uh, you definitely, I'm. I go easier on NASCAR than both of y'all. For sure. I don't know. It's pretty close. I think I am. I think yeah. I am because sometimes I throw all reason out the window and I'm just like, you definitely do that a lot. Um, um, but but no, I mean, I will say, Sundress, NASCAR did the right thing. Whether, yeah. I mean, they could have whatever you, you could have moved it up earlier but ultimately they made the right decision and the race got run yep and you know what like five years from now the only a few people are ever going to really remember that this race didn't run when it was supposed to yeah so uh, good for nascar because you're dumbass no you gotta go sundress oh uh daniel suarez Okay. Okay. I was gonna. I figured you were probably gonna take whichever one I didn't. So for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um. Dumbass. <laughs> Joey Logano. Yeah. Flash, dude. I, I clash, concur. Bro. I concur. Flash, bro. Um. It's in the name, buddy. Yeah. Your buddy. Uh. I'm buddy. He's yeah, not buddy. Correct. He's not buddy. Your buddy. Yeah. Joey, it is in the name. Flash. Like, did you expect it's it's not it's not sunshine, rainbows, and unicorn piss. It's a race, and it doesn't mean anything. So it doesn't really matter if Ty Gibbs pushes you out of the way for a win that doesn't mean anything. And he didn't even win the race. He got dumped. So what does it matter, ah, Joey? Ah, and she starts so racing. racing. <laughs> Thank you, Grandpa. Oh. <laughs> oh, God, so dumb. Uh, yeah, we couldn't even make it to Daytona without like, really? Uh, yeah. Um. All right. Let's talk about it. We, your, what's your idea for the clash? Well, first, I want to like real quick. I want to touch on, or do you want to do our ideas? I want to touch on what is going around the rumor mill first. Well, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. So, it's been. I think it all kind of started because everybody is kind of assuming that the clash in LA has run its course. It hasn't been officially said, but everybody knows. They had a three, um, they had a three year deal. This is year three. Obviously it hasn't 
I, at least I feel like it hasn't produced what I was hoping it would produce, but it hasn't been, it was, it's when still it's been a successful experiment, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think this scored. all started. I mean, obviously NASCAR Twitter is blowing up about what it, what, do we do this, 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 like, what, what, what should we do? Everybody's throwing out ideas. And then Kyle Busch put on Twitter a poll where people could vote for um, back at Daytona, stay in LA, uh, I don't remember what the third one was, but the fourth one was um, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, like I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. which logistics-wise, it, it just wouldn't work by the size of the track, but it's a fun idea. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a fun, it's a fun idea, but we already go to the market enough. We don't need it. So that kind of started the whole thing. And then everybody, like all the actual prominent figures in the sport, were spitting out their ideas. But around Overseas, the out of the U.S., so it's the other one. Yeah, that's the rumor mill is overseas out of the U.S. Specifically, we heard Mexico City. Yeah, um, which would be and incredible. Then the, and then the other one going around is back to Daytona. And now, my personal opinion, I, you're probably going to disagree with me on one of them. Don't do either. Um, that's just my personal preference. If they had to do one, good Lord, I guess go to Mexico. But everybody, to everyone saying Daytona, we have two duels, a truck race on Friday, an Xfinity race on Saturday, the Daytona 500. We drive, I don't know, three hours north, but we do the exact same thing again on a mile shorter track in Atlanta and a week later. We don't need another restricted plate race. Hey, everybody, every, go look at Gluck's poll. You know what, what the two lowest clash votes ever were in his poll? The last two at the Daytona Oval. You know why? Because they sucked. Yeah, there's a reason we, we, there's a reason we ran we the left. road. Well, let well, me that talk. Too, but... There's, there's a ahead. reason we ran the road course in 2021. People were calling for the clash to go away completely after yeah. 2020. And it didn't because it makes money on TV. And Bush wants it. And so we had to do something different. Why would we go back to Daytona? Yeah. It's the same. We have different opinions on this, but it's the same you know, confusion I had with Bristol Spring going back to concrete. Um, so, yeah, I don't agree. I don't think they should go back to Daytona. Um, the abomination that was the 2020 race is all you need to see. Exactly. Eric Jones won with a junkyard car. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and Denny Hamlin, and Jeff Gordon called Denny Hamlin uh, making the pass for the win when he was a lap down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, give your go ahead and give your thoughts on Mexico before I give mine. Um, so I think a, I think we it's obvious we're trying to go to Montreal. I think to have a points race outside of the U.S. is incredibly important. To have a driver with the status that Daniel Suarez has in the the story behind him to have obviously I'm biased in that, but to have a race in that country where you also have a full on racing series, I think is a great move. I, I, here's the thing. I think it's a crime that we haven't done this. We have racing in Europe. We have racing in Mexico. We have racing in Canada. We have, racing now in brazil why why have we not brought the cup series to any of those places since we were last at montreal that's that's criminal in my opinion and i think that we need to start the rotation of of doing that i think that could be the new identity of the clash is we move it around to different countries where we also have racing and i think a uh, year a uh, three two three year deal in mexico two three year deal in canada two three year deal in europe and brazil i think i i i think that's a great idea i think if you do that you do one year deals and you cycle or that yeah um here's my issue with mexico if they're gonna do it they're gonna do it in mexico city they're gonna do the same thing they did with la it's gonna be at a football stadium well, a soccer, soccer stadium, whatever, football stadium, <laughs> football, whatever. Um, yeah. And 
I don't care as much about number one. Can Kyle Busch race if they run the Clash in Mexico? I was just about to say that. Can <laughs> Kyle Busch? <laughs> That's the somebody should have. Somebody, please tell me someone commented that on his poll. Be like, well, if we can you even race if we go to Mexico? <laughs> I think I saw that actually. Um, so obviously the nationwide at the time series raced at. I believe they raced at um, – they raced where F1 races now. Yes, I can't remember correct. what the name of the track yeah, is. Yeah, I don't but know they, where it is, but it's in they, you know, Mexico City. The, the, the racing was great. Yeah. From what I have heard and been told through different stories from people, everyone that went hated it because of the environment around and the yes. fact that and the fact that every team had to have a convoy the whole way there and back to protect them from the cartel. Yeah, that's that's the, the old that's the that's my issue with Mexico is it is going to be a logistics nightmare. Yeah. Because yep. the current state and it they ra- they last raced there when 2010 Eight. Eight? Okay, yeah. was it eight? I was yeah. little. I don't. I don't know the day, yeah. the years. Oh, they raced four times. Oh, five through eight. Okay. Well, I can tell you for a fact that the social climate, environment, whatever, and the state of that issue is way more magnified now now than it was in two thousand eight. Yeah, it's it's um, worse. Yeah. So yeah. that's your issue with Mexico, is how are you? Because I mean, I guarantee you, they would wherever they race, they would sell out. Yeah, it, it would that's be not, huge. That's not the issue. It would be huge. The issue is how do you make it safe? And yeah. how do you get everybody to and from there safely? I think if they can figure out a way to do that, they have maybe the biggest thing to happen in NASCAR since they went to Japan. Yeah, and you know what? You know what? I thought about that today. It that's That's not a bad idea. Japan? Because... Obviously, since the tsunami in 2011, the oval at Twin Ring has not been used. It's kind of screwed up. Yeah. However, NASCAR, you have money. You yeah, just but, you just built and tore down I get a it. football stadium. I get it. I get it. But I I I want they. I think they should race where they already race. I think they should. I mean, I get that too, but like that at the same time, that would be would cool. Be, it'd be. I feel it'd like be that would. Cool. I feel like that would kind of please all parties, I guess, because it the 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 I traditionalist actually, homers that are kind of like, oh, I need to go back to the way things were. Well, everybody back then, if I if I, I mean, I wasn't alive back then, but I mean, they didn't have bad a bad reception back then, did it? When they raced uh, in Japan, I don't think so. Here, listen to this. This is Adam Stern tweeted this 10 hours ago. NASCAR will host a number of officials in Daytona from different countries interested in hosting a race. So. I would prefer them do the clash than the points race. Yeah. I think, Um, I think there's going to be, I think Montreal is kind of a foregone conclusion. Um, But well, I I mean that, that doesn't, that I don't really, that's different. Yeah, that's 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 compared I think it's definitely going to be a points race co- compared to race. compared to Brazil, Europe, Mexico, going to Montreal and racing in Canada is like a piece of cake. Yeah, exactly. Because you um, don't have you don't have the um, social climate that you have of Mexico and you don't have to, you know, travel oceans like you do with the other three. So well, you wouldn't have to travel oceans to go to Brazil, but <laughs> you have to at least cross a canal. Yeah, um, but uh, so yeah, what was it? Did you so that's a really idea? long, that's a really long drive. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody wants yeah, to do that. No. My idea, however, is a hundred percent on brand with anyone who knows who I am and what my favorite kind of racing is. But it's not a bad one, and I thought I had an original idea until uh, Landon Huffman, Justin Marks, and Matthew Doner all basically carbon copied it to twitter not that they knew i had the idea first well but I was like, all the boomers in nascar said this when they announced the coliseum so it's a three-year-old idea that we're we're just now um 
Okay, so what do you th- what do you think it is? You, I, th- I assume you know what it is. I would imagine it's a short track. Go go to a local short track and NASCAR invests money in it. And yeah, yeah. But I feel like okay, you don't just do it like willy nilly. Okay, you yeah. take you have you have in kind of the same way that you have the national or the different countries series, you have the NASCAR home tracks. Yeah. Okay, you take those. You take a few other ones that have to apply to be put in the pool. Say you're Slingers of the World and Thunder Roads. And I don't know if Tri County is a home track. I don't think it is. So, like Tri County, places like that. Like yeah. y- you take your best short tracks in the country. I have it all written down right here. Number one, you put all of them into a, into a pot, basically. They have to apply to get even in. They don't really necessarily have to pay a fee. Let's just say they have to apply and get accepted. You put them in, you put them in a pool. Okay. You, for the inaugural one, you draw a name out of a hat. Hey, we drew, I'm going to try it. We drew Berlin. We're going to run the clash at Berlin. Okay. Well, not everybody and their brother is qualified. You can say, I think it would work better. It always used to be pole winners. But we'll just say only the 16 cars. I I say since you're doing short tracks, I would say only the 16 cars that made the playoffs last year are in. Unless the winner of the clash didn't make the playoffs, they're the only one that gets a provisional to get in. That is it. um, Okay. So that's that's your Yeah, so you, you take 16 or 17 cars depending on who won the clash and what they did for the rest of the year, you go race there. And I don't even, I don't even think you like, I don't think you do heats. Like that's it. That's how you had to, if you want to be in the clash, make the playoffs or win last year. Okay. And you Uh go to this short track, you invest. I mean, it would change a little bit because like the whole, I mean, now teams that have a charter wouldn't be required to go. Yeah. But I mean, this is logistically, this would take a lot of work. And it changed a lot of things, but I'm just saying in a perfect world, this is what I would do. Yeah, and then yeah. with that racetrack, you take the money, you invest it into the racetrack. You want to do temporary seating? Fine. You want to have, help them add more seating? Fine. Whatever you do, you build this racetrack up. You make it a must-see event on TV. You bring local divisions to support. Plus, I also wrote down, have a national NASCAR weekly series late model race. 50 grand all-star race, but it counts towards national points, double points race. All, now all your best late model stock drivers are there too. You let other local, and it's like a whole night. You have like a couple local division, one local division, a all star late model race, and then sixteen of the best cup drivers in the world. They race on this awesome short track, and then the winner gets out and they draw the name for where you're going to race next year. And that that gives that that track a whole year to plan. They can put it on their schedule for next year, and then when you leave that track that you just left. You leave them something behind, whether it's new amenities, more seating, new lighting, new walls, new pavement, whatever. You just made that short track that much of a better facility, and now grassroots racing in that area is going to survive for that much longer. I that's think, what I um, would do. I think, ultimately, I don't think that's what I would do. But let me, I'll put it like this. You bring up a great point. Uh, well, one, it's a, it is a good idea. It, it would be, it would be really fucking cool. Um, yeah. I just don't think that's what's going to happen for what they're trying to do. I don't think, I think that's what's going to happen either. But I think that you look at somewhere like Florence. I had never heard of Florence Motor Speedway. And then Dale Jr. goes and races there. And I've been to it three and three or four times since then. It's It, it does a lot for for the community when you bring superstars to these local short tracks. And I think that is, that is now just imagine you put it on national television. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's, and you know what, maybe honest, honest to God, you can make the clash, the Nat, the international race, do that with the all-star race. Yeah. Yeah, and make think... and just grow a set and make Wilkesboro a 400 lap points race. Yeah, That's and what let the All Star race be that. 
because that was you know I was what? Kinda... in a way I, I wanted to present that idea for the clash, but in a way that identity almost fits the all-star well, race. Here. Yeah. Let me, let me say it. Yeah. I think, um, I think, yeah, it, I think the identity definitely fits the all-star race more um, because it is the all-star race. And I think that's, it plays into the poor NASCAR fan and driver, you know, racing at grassroots short track. And I think you get that you pay your dues back to the communities that built the sport. And then as far as the clash goes, I think you, you, and it's, we're already kind of doing this. You, you make it a race where I don't really have a much of an idea where to take it. Um, but I think you continue to do this move around to new markets deal and attract new race fans because I think I think it's worked. I think the I think they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish out of LA. And I think that if they keep doing it, it's only good for the sport. So yeah. I don't really have a hard format. I think other than I'm fine with the heats, I'm fine with everybody going. Um I think the poll winners deal, I think that kind of ran its course. I think, um, but I do think the field needs to be, I think 18 cars. I think half of the field that shows up gets the race. Yeah. So, and um, I think, I think both ideas are good because when you go into international markets, you, you tap into a whole new fan base that yep. hasn't even almost been discovered before. But then on the other hand, like I was saying, and like you kind of wrapped together, like you could, you could, I guess, all you the, know, all everybody complained when they went to the clash. They were like, why don't we go to, you know, XYZ rinky dink short track that holds 3,000 people? And, and it was just, that's not what NASCAR was trying to do, but we couldn't do both. You know, they kind of, they have a, in a way, a golden opportunity to do it. Because that's exactly what they did with North Wilkesboro. Exactly, yeah. Like, that. that is what North Wilkesboro was, was a revival of a short track. And the fact they that had they to put the temporary about, seating. They've talked about Nashville being the, Nashville Fairgrounds being the, the all-star race. Um, I, and yeah. I don't even think, you know, I don't know how I feel about Nashville being that. I, I would say yes for Nashville just because of the Cumberland Yard thing and just say, you know, like give, give them the finger and go run the all-star race there. But I would rather that go to yeah, but I'll, less I'll, prominent short tracks that people don't know the name of. You know, like yeah, the, yeah. my love of short track racing really started with SRX. I, the first year of SRX, on, I mean, I was, I was 16, I think. Yeah, I was 16. I didn't know what Stafford was. I didn't know what Slinger was. I knew what um where where else, where else did they race that year? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Obviously, I knew what I knew what Knoxville and Eldora were, but like specifically like Stafford and Slinger, I was like, where's that? And then they put on like great races, and now I've been to one of them, and it's an amazing track. And Slinger, I was gonna get to go to this year, and I mean it's it's an awesome racetrack. Like it. And they kind of have an opportunity too, since SRX kind of fell by the wayside now to kind of take we're, that. We're getting way off topic, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. Just kind of like take that idea and run with it. Is yeah. What I was going to say. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they want to do. Obviously, Ben Kennedy has said they want to get the schedule out way earlier this year. We'll see what happens. Obviously, that I won't hold got, my breath. They got to make the decision on what they want to do. Um, but yeah. Uh, other than that. I think we covered everything. Um, anything else you want to say about the clash or about anything? I think we've covered it all. Uh, uh no. Cool. I think right. I'm I think I'm I think I'm good. All right. I think I'm good too. Um, thank you guys, of course, for, for listening and watching. Um, we'll see how this whole editing process goes for me. Um so <laughs> Uh, we, uh, there, there's rumors swirling around the podcast, uh, as to, uh, who's going to be on next week. Um, but, uh, I think, I think Chuck and I, I think we did an okay job. I talk too much. So do you though. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn how to, how to keep us, keep us grounded. So, uh, we're, it's all, that was always process. Seth's job. That was always Seth's job. It's like, all right, you two idiots talk too much. Let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so 
yeah, I don't know. We'll uh, see. So well, it won't be just it won't be just me and Buddy all year. Obviously, Seth will be back eventually, uh, and it won't be just me, Seth, and Buddy either. We'll we'll have a couple new people. Yeah, here. yeah, we got some cool stuff planned. Um, I'm working on getting a co-host of a Dirty Mo podcast on here, so we'll see what happens. With that, um, I think if you guys know me, um, you could probably figure out who, but we're not going to say. Today. We're not going to say. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening, um, and thank you guys for any returning subscribers um, or listeners, and thank you to all the new ones. Um, we're looking forward to a great year. What's up, Chuck? And, yeah, just uh, happy race season, everybody. We are officially five days away from the first – Big Motor Small Blade at the racetrack experience. That's right. We're we're all going to day, the Daytona 500. Seth and I will be, Chuck will be at lots of dirt races and local races in the Daytona area um, that week. And then he'll be at the 500. Seth and I, we will be at the duels truck race, Xfinity and Daytona. We got some really cool stuff planned to so look out on our social media outlets for that. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. Um, and we'll see you next week. See ya. Go fuck yourself. <laughs>